you know, you're learning the entire life, you know. Yeah. We're the students of like life and time and whatever. So, you know, especially when I feel that, you know, I am like, you know, learning these like tiny things and details like, you know, all the time. Every now and then I see something and, you know, uh, I might be not even aware that I just learned something new, like, uh, you know, it uh, subtly, you know, uh, it was subtly assimilated in my mind or, and I'm not sure how to uh, illustrate my point, but Like, like, you know, it's like you're never too old or you're never too experienced to, you know, learn new stuff, so. One thing that I realized also uh, regarding my streams and uh, my ability to think and to talk and you know be uh, sort of uh, what I realized is when I have streams uh, earlier in the day <coughs> I think I'm a little bit more talkative and uh, it's just my brain spins a little bit faster and uh, it's probably like, you know, after you've had a, you know, a healthy stint of sleep, it's just brain sort of brain is not hogged, you know, the CPU is not hogged, of, you know, the entire day of processing irrelevant data and uh, So I should probably, you know, try and uh, make these streams uh, earlier. And I'll have to pick up my pace and uh, I'll have to definitely uh, start creating, you know, longer streams. The four hour stream per day thing that I sort of figured out would be good is actually not so good because I want to cover everything that I do uh, uh, for this project, yeah. especially you know, regarding uh, modeling some of these dinosaurs. I want to cover this with uh, live stream and uh, so if I'm doing you know four hours a day, four hours of work a day, that's not much. So I'll need to bring more to the table but as I said I'm really looking forward to um, starting Dino uh, Narasup and uh, there is a possibility I'll do streams of uh, modifying Tyrannosaurus Rex into Tarbosaurus, uh, Tarbosaurus uh, Batar uh, for the purposes of uh, this book as well so I'll need to, you know, change the proportions of uh, Tyrannosaurus a little bit. I'll need to change some details. I'll need to change the color. And uh, it should be pretty straightforward, you know, regarding, you know, the process. And uh, could be fun as well. Yeah. Yeah. T-Rex is fun, so... <laughs> and, you know, Tyrannosaur... Tyrannosauride family is fun, so... We should be, you know, having uh, 
couple more really interesting streams ahead of us. No, no way, dude. I'll need to start hitting like 10 hour marks, you know. By the end of the year, my YouTube channel will have like 3,000 hours worth of, you know, dinosaur sculpting. <laughs> Take that, Dave Krenz. <laughs> oh my god. And then I'll need to spend a year to, you know, edit and uh, um, create a, uh, like, meaningful, uh, you know, <laughs> one or two hours of dinosaur sculpting <laughs> oh, man. then while i'm at it i could you know uh, just you know jump uh, jump on and create a bloopers version <laughs> Yeah, it'd be fun to create bloopers versions with, you know, all the Arnold Schwarzenegger bits and <laughs> one one hour blooper of, you know, um, no audio <laughs> episode. <laughs> that would be fun. One huge failed blooper thing. Three thousand hours sculpting tutorial on how to sculpt dinosaurs in ZBrush, all for free. Rated PG thirteen. <laughs> oh man. Subscribe now, or yeah, we kill you. No, no, I, I should, you know, I should, when, when all is said and done, and, uh, like, I end up with 3,000 hours of, uh, you know, you know, stream of, you know, doing dinosaur sculptures and stuff like that, and then, like, uh, uh, monetize my YouTube channel and uh, sort of make a subscription-based, uh, uh, like, uh, So, sort of, you cannot view these three thousand dollars if you do not subscribe, and the subscription subscription sort of costs like I don't know one dollar or something like that, some ridiculous small amount. And you know those things, but they are so cheap that people are buying them that are never going to use them or never going to need them. They're just you know buying them because they are so cheap, and like you know certain certain niche of people is hyped about it. So you know, I, I just want to buy that. You know, you never know. <laughs> like you know granny grand granny or grandpa you know coming to the market buying fish and stuff and then you know like seeing oh i might you know i might uh, chip in for this one too as well because you know
<laughs> yeah, I went through my um, fair share of you know buying things that I ultimately never used. Uh, you know, I I sort of came under the fever of eBay you know during one period and I was just like buying you know shit on eBay that I you know really never needed and really never used so uh, you have that as well there's that things like oh I gotta buy myself this uh, uh, hard case shaped like a banana to keep your bananas fresh inside of it you know retarded stuff like that and then you buy it you know you opened it you put your banana in it one time if <laughs> and uh, that's it put it away in some you know dark spot in your cabinet and you see it like you know 10 years later like oh I remember this or you you even do not remember when you bought it that's what worse all right so Mr. Duck. Speaking about banana, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just having one. Okay, so right now we are going to create a bloated, blown, uh, like uh, inflated, <coughs> I'm sorry, inflated uh, um, goiter or throat pouch thing. Develop.
let me go to visibility and start maybe a little bit grow like this hmm I'm not sure This is going this is going to be good okay uh, let me see so what I need to do now is uh, split this a bit okay I see Let me try it like this. All right. We need to retrace our subdivision levels. So right, so before I do anything, I need to paint All right, first things first. So we need to paint our these like larger uh, bumps. Um, so that when we uh, inflate our develop or goiter thing here um, so that we keep track of uh, where these bigger bumps were
Okay, so I see that I missed the spot right here. No biggie, we'll, uh, we'll add this later on.
right, so uh, there is one little tip that I can give <clears throat> right now. I mean, it's really actually not wor ma worth mentioning, but uh, so basically, I press my soft brush right now. It's a shortcut key, and uh, when you're in, when your soft keys, uh, soft brush key is pressed you have you can uh, modify uh, you know what it affects so you can soften your color or if you you know leave rgb on you'll soften only the polypane information and if you leave only add you will uh, soften you know these details these bumps but the color is going to remain sharp so this is something that you know some of you out there that are, you know, just beginning ZBrush, uh, you might find this uh, useful. But it's really intuitive, so you know, you'd have get it yourself. Like, but remember, you have to keep your smooth brush key depressed you know, and work on your, you know, what you want your brush to affect or, you know, even the, you know, uh, the focal shift and the, the draw size and everything, you need to keep it depressed because, you know, you can see when I'm switching from one brush to other, they have different, uh, they're differently set. So what I'm going to do now is, you see I turned off RGB because I want to keep my uh, polypane data of where my pumps are. I want to keep that polypane data intact and <coughs> basically I switched off RGB so that my smooth brush does not affect uh, my color. I'm going to uh, go down a step because it's easier to smooth out these details. You can see how fa how fast it happens, how fast we are smoothing down these details. So now that we've smoothed out our details, we need to take our move brush maybe. And so we are trying to get uh, this goiter, this throat sac thing uh, bloated, like blown up, filled with air. And this, okay, so I'm going to mask, I'm going to mask my edges a little bit so I don't affect them too much. So later when we are uh, projecting these, uh, this, this, uh, uh, bloated, uh, inflated uh, goiter onto our model to create a morph target it's going to be a lot easier to mask uh, to like blend that sh new shape and if we mask I'm sorry if we mask uh, you know the edges of our current model so this is great you know you do it like this and then you know this is beautiful exactly like this this is exactly what I wanted here all right and uh, 
Um, so we're doing this uh, sort of bloated and inflated uh, air sac for like a potential uh, need and you know later on when I'm illustrating these uh, pieces for the book to maybe have a uh, um, like version where I'm not sure like Dinocarus is alerted or you know some members of the uh, uh, of the like herd are alerted to the presence of you know predators 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 I'm not sure and um, you know, so this would come in come in handy we. have something like this all right so it, this is a good time to take um, a inflate brush as well and uh, do some of the inflation with the brush that is intended for you know these things inflating things inflating pieces of mesh This is a good question actually. Uh, the scales shouldn't stretch and uh, <coughs> so this is the reason that I painted uh, the thing, the, the, the scales uh, while the uh, this throat pouch was uh, <coughs> like in its normal position and so you know when I start um, like detailing, detailing uh, this version of uh, throat uh, sack I'm going to have to uh, sort of uh, unstretch these uh, these larger scales bumps they're not necessarily scales but they shouldn't stretch and that's that's a good uh, that's a good point So all these tiny scales as well, they're going to be like we need to you know maintain their shape, but we need to just set up the brush so that we uh, when we lay down these scales, they just lay they're laid like further apart from you know each other, like you know they're more spread uh, in the you know inflated version. So I'm going to I'm going to take this mesh and take this goiter. Just to see what's going on and uh, to try and uh, you know make it look oh mm -hmm. oh it's good it's good it's okay I thought the mask uh, was gone but it's still here. Let 
me take the move brush again. It is uh, actually also uh, easy to see, uh, based on the paint pumps, how uh, how they've got uh, all distorted. So we'll have to restore the sort of you know uh, straight lines, sort of you know maintain the rows like they got a little bit disturbed uh, with this uh, inflation. I'm now trying to think like maybe a uh, female uh, member of uh, Dino Chaos herd. You know, I'm trying to look at this goiter that's inflated, that's inflated, and uh, trying to imagine, sort of, you know, put myself in a in a hare's skin and uh, you know see what uh, would be like attractive for me, you know, to see on you know, a guy, so to speak. So I want it to be as, you know, big as possible and as, uh, s like, you know, round and, you know, smooth as possible.
right so the point where we need to repaint these uh, bumps and let's see how that works all right so a little stretch is acceptable but you know these massive stretches are they shouldn't happen So I'm just going to try and uh, sort of create a line, straight line. Hold on. So.
clicking this, this looks sloppy. Come on, we need a little bit more geometrical approach here. A, there is a African bird, I think, a uh, ground. Uh, uh, wait a second, ground bill. Uh, so it's not like a horn bill, but instead it's like. Like underground hornbill or something. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if we're thinking the same. Yeah, I, I am aware of the ground hornbill. They're in, they're really like fascinating uh, birds. I really like them. This is the link to one of the images. They have them in the zoo in Zagreb, capital of Croatia. Uh, they had a pair, I think, or three uh, ground hornbills, and uh, I remember once I came and they had like only one or two, and uh, at the time we were there, uh, the you know zookeeper was passing by and we asked him like what happened to the other bird, and the guy told us basically that uh, um, basically some idiot through threw in a uh, plastic bottle uh, like uh, cork or uh, hold on I'm not sure the word Yeah, plastic bottle cork, and uh, the bird ate it, and uh, just got complicated, and you know the bird died. And so yeah.
so I don't know, you know, either a kid threw it in or basically some some ignorant jackass and you know shit happened. And I loved to, you know, uh, these were probably one of the most fascinating birds uh, for me because of the way they moved and uh, you know and they uh, like they were very uh, they were very inquisitive inquisitive um, as soon as someone would approach their like enclosure they would you know um, start closing in and uh, you know turning their heads and looking and, uh, they were pretty cool birds. So the inflated goiter thing might never, you know, see the light of day uh, in the book or, you know, maybe anywhere else, uh, but uh, I'm doing it regardless, because at this very moment, at this uh, very moment, I have, like, some ideas that, you know, how we could use it, so... Because in the book there is a moment where uh, Dino Carius, uh, so uh, at this point I'm not I don't I'm not sure if uh, there were like a couple of uh, individuals you know a couple of Dino Carius, uh grazing uh, uh, in the shallow uh, water, and uh, what happens is uh, a pack of Tarbosaurus, dinosaurs, uh, ambushes them and uh, ambushes it, a dino carries, and attacks, you know, these couple of Tarbosaurus, sorry, sorry, uh, these couple of Tarbosaur dinosaurs uh, attack uh, this uh, dino carries, carries. And 
and uh, yeah so uh, what I was saying or thinking rather uh, um, it could be a good uh, thing to have like you know a couple of dino uh dinosaurs in the background uh, and maybe one of them has you know this goiter inflated as to alert you know other uh, members of the heard you know sort of signal retreat or you know run or whatever or maybe the one that's being attacked can you know uh, sort of puff this goiter up as to appear you know more dangerous and bigger and whatnot you know as a last resort to you know maybe try and avoid being attacked by these quick and you know powerful theropods Yeah, um, although um, there are some mammals that, you know, have <coughs> this ability, I think some monkeys can do it. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether there are some other animals that have uh, the ability to puff their goiter. Not sure. So the interesting, interesting, uh, interesting option would be also to have it, uh, um, like, uh, uh, nod his head down and uh, compress the goiter. So <coughs> you know, to have it divided and you know, one air sac, one air sac, you know. It's like compressed to you know like one side and the other to the other side and maybe you know the animal like theoretically like you know if it had something like this would you know uh, nod its head like up and down and this goiter would you know maybe produce some noise or you know just physically shape uh, phys physically change its shape like drastically you know from being like you know one like smaller goiter inside you know when the animal raises its head like upwards the goiter sort of you know compresses and becomes a little bit smaller and the, when the animal uh, like you know nods its uh, head down uh, the the goiter you know sort of stretches to the you know outwards and uh, if the animal did it like faster and you know whatever and there could be like possible you know all these arrays of motion so so, so it could could have made a you know fascinating uh, uh, sort of image this behavior You know, especially the 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 noises that it could m might have produced, <coughs> because you know, uh, 
generally the air is spilling from you know uh, within you know uh, these type of uh, structures is prone you know to produce some sort of noise like you know part party noise or you know squealy noise or whatever other type of noises can be produced by you know uh, <coughs> squeezing uh, large quantities of air from you know one sec to another and back and forth pipes All right, so we have our <clears throat> inflated goiter. Hold on. Oh, uh, I think I know about this bird as well, but I haven't seen it in a while. So what is this bird? Is it a frigate bird that you mentioned earlier? Oh yeah, it is. Cool. Nice. Yeah, I think I've seen this bird like long time ago and uh, I sort of forgot about it. So... I like it. Learning something new each day. I love it. Oh man, I love, uh, I found a photo with a uh, frigate bird with uh, deflated uh, devil up. Look at this. Would you just look at this? Look at the size of the thing. Looks beautiful. I love the structure. bird so this is uh, the bird we were talking about a frigate bird rigate birdissimo and this is the uh, version like uh, a photographer caught it uh, with uh, you know with its uh, throat sack being deflated
I love how the feathers uh, are like you know <coughs> arranged and how they become larger and denser as they you know move away from the goiter towards the back of the towards the chest and back of the neck. I like this bird. It's pretty. Yeah, it's uh, really pretty. It's really, it looks graphic and um, looks really nice. But I still still have problem with my thing here.
this is a bit better.
it really depends uh, because uh, this is done with the morphing and uh, basically I have two stages like you know fully inflated and uh, deflated the best uh, version would be if I had like you know uh, like uh, <coughs> some sort of uh, intermediate uh, pose with you know semi inflated uh, sac and um, so you know you um, connect these three morphs into like one model and then you know with the scroller you you're, you're basically you know determining how big your air sac ultimately is so you know it doesn't have to be as big as uh, I made it here best answer to your valid question will be when I'm you know when I ultimately uh, create these more targets and you know try it and give it a go in uh, in 3ds max this is when I'll ultimately see you know whether this works or whether it you know, looks off whether it needs this intermediate uh, stage to work better and you know stuff like that
just wanted to see how this looks attached to the model. It might not look as much as much uh, right now, but you know, it uh, might not look as much, you know, when I finish it. But as I said, I wanted to give it a go. And again, the, the thing that I noticed the other day is it looks, uh, Dinocatus for some reason looks pretty darn good from this angle, like, you know, head bowed down and uh, sort of grazing or whatever. Even with this uh, inflated pouch, it looks. Uh, pretty cool to me. I could easily imagine this being a male and puffering and you know doing his courtship uh, mating dance and uh, you know doing his thing and uh, like you know a, a couple of females or a female you know is on looking looking this guy being all silly monkeying around you know, trying to get into her pants now you know if you if you try and imagine it with the color and uh, feathery you know fuzz integument and everything it could turn out pretty good but we'll see all right so i'll finish with this thought and um, obviously i haven't made it to the uh, like i haven't finished this inflated version i'll do that uh, tomorrow i might do it off stream like uh, or i'll see i might i might even do it you know doing the stream and uh, then start there is no source Although I'm keen to, you know, start on there is no source as soon as possible, so we'll see. Anyways, <coughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, guys, uh, uh, hope you'll find this uh, another stream in this in this series, and uh, hope hopefully you'll find it uh, somewhat useful. Or you know, uh, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit tired and. <laughs> Yeah, Alan, uh, it was my pleasure as well. Cam thanks so much for, you know, uh, sticking out with me and uh, making me uh, a company. Uh, much appreciated. So, yeah, looking forward to, you know, new streams and uh, new stuff. So it should be, should be fun. But remember, guys, I'm still learning this stream thing and uh, still, uh, you know, trying to uh, get my way around, uh, you know, speaking English and uh, trying to, you know, uh, make some sense out of what I'm talking about, you know, be it uh, uh, zebrash related, be it, you know, about dinosaurs, be it about whatever other subject. So. Hopefully in time we'll all, you know, be smarter and more, you know, fun to, you know, listen to or whatever. Thanks, guys. Signing off. Uh, looking forward to the stream number 11. Bye-bye.